Joining us once again to answer your Facebook questions is Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. Good morning to you again, Lieutenant Governor. Ready for the first question? You bet. All right, D. Sure asking, do you think it would be a good idea if we act now and prepare the state to at least have one emergency facility to take care of our nursing home residents that are COVID positive? They're all at high risk and we want to protect them. I think it's a great question. In fact, we should have more than one. I was in conversations this weekend with Dr. Toma and uh, Dr. Yazawa over the last week. We have to have extra capacity. We've looked at several facilities, and depending on what the leadership decides at the Department of Health, places like Wapiwa might be very valuable if they uh, get permission from their local legislators, and of course, the Ahi Hospital. The key is to have spaces at these facilities that are completely separate from any other long-term care patients, so wings that can be separated 1,000% so that there's no spread. But we have to have this for safety. Marielle Yase is asking, have you heard of any news about a vaccine? If so, what are your thoughts as a doctor? Uh, my thoughts are that they are really doing a good job accelerating the vaccination process. I will certainly get it, as with my family, if it's developed properly. They've uh, had two successes already, one out of Moderna. They're in a, they're in a study now with 30,000 individuals in phase three of the trial, and they get, they're getting antibody response, so immune response. And then today, the University of Oxford uh, demonstrated they've had very good results. I think it was for T-cell activity, which is also good immune response uh, to prevent the disease from spreading. These tests and studies are going on in people between age 28 and 55 uh, to be safe. And what do you think in terms of time, timeline for widespread access? Still 2021? I won't be shocked if it's before the end of the calendar year. I think it's very possible. All right, fingers crossed. Laura Means asking, with all the families needing to take their college kids to the mainland in August, wouldn't it be a good idea to try out the test within 72 hours that is opening up to everyone on 9-1? Yes, actually, I think that that's a good way for us to beta test our processes. Uh, these are our own local residents. We have had lower rates than anywhere else. So to have them go safely and drop their kids off would be good. They get a test within three days of travel back. And then what I would recommend is that they uh, self-isolate for three days and we retest them just to really see uh, some good data and see how this is working. I'd like to see it work perfectly. Yolaine Armitage says, because the numbers are rising, will we get a lockdown again? How much is the cost of a test? So uh, I don't think we're going to get a full lockdown again with these numbers. We've had 90 cases over the last four days, so that's averaging, you know, 22 and a half cases a day. We've tolerated uh, numbers that were higher than that, and we have not seen a large uh, explosion at our hospitals though I'm a little worried that we've had a slight uptick. So I don't think that we're going to shut down based on these rates. And tests cost uh, varying amounts. It costs about $120 when it's paid for by Medicare. When people pay out of pocket, it will be $139 apparently with the private testers. And then the rapid tests are about $75 a test. And what's your final message for the day to our viewers as we head into a new work week? There are 10 days left in this month, so if everyone would please wear masks like they've never worn them before. I mean, all the time, unless you're at home just with your family. Wear them all the time. We can chop these numbers down. If you get back, back down to the single digits, we will all feel a lot more comfortable about all of the things we've talked about, whether it's schools or travel, but mostly keeping people alive and healthy in the hospital. All right, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, thank you so much for joining us once again. And if you'd like to hear from Lieutenant Governor, he does give um, his followers on social media a daily update in terms of numbers and his thoughts. So thanks again, Lieutenant Governor, for doing that. My pleasure. For now, let's go ahead and toss things back to Chris.